Oh, hey, how you guys doing today? Everyone good? Yeah. Are you guys ready to make business cards? Yeah. Because you all need business cards, right? Yeah. Eventually, at some point. Uh, great. So, um, by the way, if you guys want to like uh, hook up with me link, uh, on LinkedIn, Twitter, um, and that's my website. I can also give you my email address and I'll give you my business card. Uh, at the end, if you guys just want to keep in touch or you guys have questions and stuff like that, you may or may not be able to finish what you're working on today. So that's totally fine. But I think you definitely will. That My goal for you guys is to make sure that you finish your business cards and have them ready to print at some point. At the, well, at, you know, definitely by the end of this class. So I just want to go through some really cool um, business cards that I found online. Just to give you an idea, you know, in terms of what you guys are thinking of design, because I don't know what you guys have been brainstorming in your head about like how you want to design. Some of you guys may have a logo. If you took my logo, my monogram design workshop last week, then you might have one ready to go. Um, that, this one I thought was pretty cool. Really bold uh, name. So there's, there's no logo here at all. It's just pure design and typography, which is really good. Um, this is a, another one, which is actually just using the paper stock of the business card itself. So there's no color to it. If you notice that um, this entire, the color that's being used for the business card is just the paper, which is another great idea too. You can do that. Um, this one was pretty cool because it, it looks like a piece of stone, uh, which I thought was cool. It's actually just a paper rip. It's probably really expensive to do stuff like this. How you doing? Uh, here's another one. As you see, not a lot of color, but they're using a nice texture, a nice pattern. So you guys can do that as well. Um, if you guys need help um, to find resources, there's a bunch of free, free ones out there. Uh, uh, there's even free photo sites um, out there that you can use as well. So feel free to, to use a bunch of textures or, or um, photography, and I can even point you in, in some good directions. This one is cool. It's actually stamps on a business card. So it's like, essentially, they printed one logo, and then I guess depending on you know whatever they want to use it for, they just have different stamps and they stamp it. That's that's pretty cool. You notice also like the sizes is different. This is a square business card. We're going to be working today off of a standard U.S. business card size. Um, but you can feel free to use different sizes. This is a UK business card size, which is actually, it looks a little bit more square. The US business card size is a little bit more rectangular. Um, I actually, I use the UK business card size because I like it. It stands out. If you ever go to conventions or meetings or even when you guys are going to interviews, you can be giving your business card to an employer or whoever you're talking to. They're gonna have stacks of business cards, but if you have one that stands out in the stack, more than likely they'll be like, oh, I, I know this card, it stands out. So that, that was pretty cool. I like, uh, I like the colors here. You know, if you guys ever, you can use a site like moo.com, M-O-O-O.com, to print your business cards. The, actually, the cool thing they do is they do something called variable printing. So that means you can have different colors on a whole set. Rather than sometimes, you know, when you send your, bit, your design to a printer, they can just print one. If you want to print different colors or different photos. A lot of photographers use Moo.com because they put their portfolio photography and you could do, there's a, there's a set there's like 50 of them. So 50 variable prints, which is pretty cool. This one I thought was really sick because it uses something called um, embossing. So there's actually like a die cut of this fox, let's just say, and they've actually pressed it. But embossed, so the paper comes up. It's raised. Really, really cool. That's another way that your business card could stand out. If someone's touching it, they feel it. It's different. So paper is huge. We're obviously only interested in design, but um, minimalism is really cool. You see, there's not a lot of information here. Personally, you know, that's a, a little bit difficult in, if you're in a position like yourself because there's so much that you want to say about who you guys are and where your contact information is. You don't need, you know, need your LinkedIn, your social media links, emails, um, your, your degree, all that stuff on, the, on your business card. This is another form of printing. Really cool paper and that's a, that's a, a, a debossing with ink inside of it. 
really cool. Um, this one you can see, but <clears throat> there's also um, some types of business cards that are really thick and you can paint the edges, which is really cool too. My, my cards have edges that are, are, are printed. This is, I love the typography on this. That's really, really cool. It might be a little hard to read, but it's just beautiful. This is really cool. Circle business cards. I was at a company once, we actually did these. And they're really hard to like keep. They get they get lost very easily, but they stand out. See, there, there you see the, the the edge painting, which is really cool, really cool. I like the the paper quality of those. Really nice. This is a, a much bigger type of card, but really cool. See how it stands out. So that's one of the things you gotta think about. If you wanna play with typography and you really wanna get creative, you should try to make your business card stand out in some, in some aspect of it. This is really funny. I mean, now this is like super expensive. This probably costs like $2 a piece to, to get printed. Um, just because that's a, that's a die, it's called a die. Anytime you have something cut, it's called a die, D-I-E. And they call it die cut. There's another die cut, because this is custom. This is um, Dot Design, is the name of the company. And then I like the shape here, because it looks like the logo. Very cool. That's called Blind, uh, blind Emboss, meaning They have actually embossed it, but they haven't put any ink inside of it, so it's just blind. It's just the paper. Just like that. So these are just some samples of uh, cool business cards. Just trying to get your inspiration going, um, you know, before you really start. That's, I mean, that's awesome. How cool is that? <laughs> you don't want to injure somebody with that, but that's, that looks pretty cool. Um, wow, I, what's his email address or her email address? Can't find it. Definitely have to make sure that your typography is legible. Usually when I'm um, making my cards, uh, I always want to print it out. Because You never know if that's legible or not, so just print it out on a, a home or office printer and just double check and make sure that the font is legible and you can read it. And always, 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 like triple check before you send it to print. Because sometimes you might get it back and say, whoa, I'm missing a, a number there, my phone number, and then you have to reprint it. Believe me, it's happened. It, it will happen because you're so focused on the design or other things. You guys have any questions? No? Okay, cool. I want to show you one other thing that I thought was pretty funny and um, appropriate for this class. Yeah. For the die cut with the chair one, yeah. um, how would that person's information be on the like, um, given? Because at least from the chair when it was assembled, you can't see any of the You can't see it? Uh, let's go back to it. Here. You're right, it looks like it's on the other side. You're right, it looks like it's on the, the bottom side. Oh, right. So, um, you know, I guess I'm assuming that they would see this information somewhere, if, whatever this is. I mean, let's see. I'm, I can't even tell if there's actual contact information on this or this is just a promotional item, right? 20th century bent ply, either they're a uh, manufacturing company or it's a furniture. Uh, sh you know, uh, showroom where they actually have furniture you could buy. So, but it, it looks like it's you know just a, a promotional thing. So, but yeah, that, man, that's a great card. That's a great card. There's really there's a lot of specialty printers who who will work with you on that. But man, it's it's probably very expensive. And um, I don't know if I, I obviously I skipped this right over. I thought you guys knew, but my name is Anthony. <laughs> so. Uh, if you guys have any questions while we do this, just you can say, hey, Anthony, or 
Tony. People call me Tony. It's totally up to you. Um, so now let's open up, I guess, let's open up InDesign. And we're going to start making business cards from scratch. Now, um, you guys all have InDesign? I wanted to ask, uh, how many of you guys have actually used InDesign before? No? Okay, that's good. You, you have? Okay. So you're, some, some haven't. That's totally cool because I'm going to show you everything. So, well, 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 you know, I mean, I just started using it yesterday, so we'll learn. We'll learn together. Of course, that's a joke. All right. So, we're going to open up InDesign. Business card uh, sizing in the U.S. is um, two inches. If that's the height, let's say we're doing a horizontal business card, two inches by three and a half inches. Okay? This is typical business card sizing. So if you guys are going to do vertical, then it's going to be three and a half by two. So you guys decide whatever's in your head, how you want to make your card, whatever is best for you, vertical or horizontal. And it also depends on your information, depends on your logo, depends on all that. All right, so we are going to start from scratch here. We are going to totally start from scratch. One of the things I want to show you, let's see. This is a good example. Do you guys have, to have this piece of paper in front of you? What is it? It's like a flyer. Okay. You guys notice, you notice how on the top of this and on the sides it doesn't print? Yeah, because the printer doesn't print that. The, the little inkjet printer does not print to the edges. And when it prints off the edges, it's called bleed. Have you guys heard that term before, bleed? I'll write it down. Bleed. That means that, means that whatever picture or color they're going to put on your business card and you want it to go all the way to the edge, you have to put a bleed on it so that the printer, when they print it, they don't print it to size. So let's say this is your business card. This is three and a half inches and this is two inches. This is your business card. They're going to print it on a piece of paper that's larger and then they just cut it. And that's how it looks. And that, that is called a bleed. So let's just put a bleed on our documents anyways. So when we design it, we can design it with a bleed. If you don't use a bleed, that's totally fine. You could, I mean, some people just use white and Remember, if you're just using white, whatever color paper you pick, it's just going to print that paper. Um, but I will always kind of design with bleach, just in case. All right? So let's get started. All right. I guess I can sit down. It's kind of cool. So new document. Um, make sure it says inches here to the right. You guys see that where it says inches? Everybody see that? So you guys all have inches. If you don't have inches, let me know. But you all have inches. All right, cool. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do a horizontal card. So I click the orientation that's uh, landscape, right? And the width is going to be three and a half. The height is two. Click, click off facing pages. Hey, click off facing pages. Now, InDesign, you can actually do this in Illustrator, too, pretty much the same way. Um, but I'll, I'll, this class is for InDesign, getting used to InDesign. InDesign usually, typically, is used for making booklets or documents with multiple pages. But it's, you could also use it for business cards because sometimes, like when I, I've done business cards for 70 employees. That's a lot of people. So I've done the pages. I've used the pages mechanism in InDesign to create all of these, these business cards. Because if you do it in, in Illustrator, if they decide to change the design, you can only change the one particular artboard in Illustrator. You can't change the whole thing. And in InDesign, you can change the whole thing. All right, so see down here below where it says bleed? Click that, open that up. So we're going to put a bleed on it. Now. Printers recommend this. You don't have to know this information, but you might as well. So this is how we put a bleed. This is two inches by three and a half inches. The bleed typically is a sixteenth of an inch, 0.125, right? So all we're going to add 
to the outside of this car is 0.125. Because that's what they're going to cut off, all right? So go here where it says top and just click the up arrow. Automatically, you'll see everything is 1.25. Does everybody have that? All right, so we're good to go. Now we create our document. Um, there's one thing here. Does, does everyone's document have like this little square in the inside? Now that was because um, I didn't... I didn't set my margins. So let me go back. Actually, let me just make another new one and show you. There's margins here. I, we skipped that. I don't want any margins. I don't need margins. Margins is like if I have a page uh, and I need a margin, so I want a guideline for my margins, but I, I don't need that. How would you? Yeah, just make a new one because you didn't do anything yet. So just, just, just like later down the line, say if you to like do that. And you forgot to do that like uh, yeah. much later. Let's see if we could actually change it here um, in document setup. Um, see, it doesn't let me change it in document setup because it's already set up. Okay. Maybe in presets. Yeah. All right. Did you see that? Okay. So let's, let's just say you already did it. So you go to document presets rather define and then hit edit. And then when you go edit, then you see the column that says margins right here. And I'm just going to go down to zero and let's see what happens. Nope. They're still there. Define edit. I don't know why they're still there. Let me make a new page. It's still there. I'll look into it for you. I'll let you know. But if you, uh, I mean, honestly, it really doesn't matter. It just, it's just something that bothers me because I don't want to see these things. So let's just, uh, let's just do it without it. Okay. So I have a new document. Okay. So everyone should have this. Um, Go to, everybody go to window, or I'm sorry, g uh, view, and you'll see extras. See extras? Hide frame edges. Click that. Because um, uh, when you start typing, you're going to see, for example, I'm just going to make a text, I'll show you how to make a text box, but I don't like to see the text boxes. So let's say, um, this is, this is at my text box I've made. I don't like to see the, the edges of my text box because to me, I feel like that box interferes with my design. But if you want to see it, you can go to view extras, show frame edges, and it's always there, even when you don't click. So that's totally up to you guys. No, it won't print. It's just a guideline. Um, I, I, by the way, I use a lot of the shortcut keys. So I'm going to teach you as my, many of the shortcut keys because it's just really easier than just like going to view. Uh, guides, um, hide guides, and then going back to view guides, show guides. You guys should always have show, like, see, I'm turning on and off. It's a uh, command uh, colon will show you the bleed. See that? Command colon. So for example, if I'm going to make a color, and I'm going to fill the color. I'll show you how to do all this, but I ju I'm just, for example. See, I need to know how far it is because sometimes you'll make it, you'll make the color, and it won't hit, it won't go to the edge of the bleed, right? So I wouldn't know that if that guideline wasn't on. So I want to make sure that, that that guideline there is on. Okay. So let's just, we're back here. This panel tool is really important. Um, I don't need. You got to clean up. Sometimes you got to clean up your workspace. I don't need the CC library thing, so I'm gonna just close that. Uh, pages is important because Pages shows me uh, the page that I'm working on. This is let's just call it page one. Um, layers is really important. We're gonna be using layers. I'm gonna show you how to use layers. And then the other um, box that I need to see is my character and uh, my paragraph box. So if I go to window. 
type, uh, I'm sorry, view, no, window, I was right. Go to um, window, type, and tables, click character. I need to see this. This is very important. And I'm going to kind of connect it under this. Bless you. And I also need to see paragraph. So go to type and tables, window, type and tables, and, and, and click paragraph. Because we're going to be learning stuff about uh, alignment and um, hyphenation and stuff like that, depending on your, your design. So I'm just going to spend the next um, you know, 15 minutes going through everything before you guys start designing. And I'm going to show you guys everything. So let's create a, a business card. Really quick, I'm going to go through this. Um, the first thing I, I want to do is let's – I want to do, a, I wanna do a, a, a texture or a pattern. You know, actually, maybe I want to do a photo of USC campus. So I'm just going to get any random photo. These are all really cool. This one, okay. I'm gonna save this to the desktop. <clears throat> now, you guys should start making a folder that says business card because you need to keep all the images and you know fonts that you wanna use in a folder and I'll show you why it's important later. Well, actually, I'll show you why now. Uh, I wanna import that, that picture that I just downloaded and saved I want to import that here on, on my business card because that's going to be the background of my business card. It's going to be the front of my business card. There's a icon here that has an X in it. It's, it looks like a square with an X, rectangle frame tool. You see that? That is the, the tool that I use to import. That I create shapes with that, and I import my photos using that. So. Remember, I need to draw it, draw the rectangle from the bleed because I need, I want this image to bleed off my card. So I'm just gonna draw a rectangle. See, I'm just drawing a rectangle. There it is, but there's no image there. So I wanna put the image inside there. So I go to File, no, I go to Place, 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 Place. Is it in File? There it is. Got it. I only know shortcuts. <laughs> All right, so you got file place, right? Very important. So I go back to that folder where I put the image, and I select it, and I hit open. And it's going to put it in there, but it's like totally zoomed. So I need to go to fitting because I need to fit it. So I go to object fitting. Now, I can fit the content proportionally, but look what's going to happen. There's, uh, you see that there? So there's another way I could fit it. I can go to object, fitting, I could play with fitting, I could fit, I can fit a content to frame, but watch what's gonna happen. It kind of distorted it a little bit. So I'm gonna undo. I'm gonna show you a, uh, a way to do that manually. You, you click the white arrow tool, the direct selection tool. You click that, select the image. You notice, once I select the image, now I see a, um, a bounding box on the image, right? So I can actually make the image larger. Now when I make the image larger, I need to hold down shift because I want to make sure that I stretch it proportionally. So I hold down shift and look, I just stretch it and I just made it bigger, but it's not quite lined up. So you see the hand tool when I just hover over the image, I just drag it. And it's, it's getting there, but it's not quite there because, see, the, the, the space between the bleed, so I need to keep going. So I just hold shift again, I drag it, boom, there it is. This is the front of my card. Um, I, I, could, I could probably put, like, the USC logo, or I could put, you know, my name, whatever. Question? Yeah, can you back to, um, like, after you place the image, you do, like, Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Do you want to fit it? There's many ways to fit it. it. Once I select the image, I can go to object fitting, and I could fit content proportionally, which it kind of already did. But if I want to drag it and make it larger, I just select the white arrow tool, the white arrow tool, and then I'll see these points around the image. Do you see these points? Real easy. 
So I just hold shift and I drag the bot like any of the corners because that makes it larger. You see that? Boom, right there. Here's a uh, kind of a cool trick I'm going to show you guys in the layers panel. The layers panel. Layer 1, I'm going to call it background image. Now, how I did that was I just double clicked on the layer. Double clicked on the layer and it'll pull up this dialog box. I'll type in background image. Hit OK. The reason why I'm, I'm creating layers now because I'm going to be putting things on top of it. And when I put things on top of it, I don't want to affect whatever's underneath it. So I'm putting that on a bottom layer. I'm going to lock it by just clicking the space between the eye icon and the name of the layer. Just lock it. All right. So now I can't move it. So I can't move it. I can't do anything to it. I can't, I can't do anything. But now I'm going to put my name on top of it because that's going to be my logo or whatever. So I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to double click, double click on the layer and put name. Now I can work off of that layer. How do we start typing on this? We hit the uh, T icon. It's called, it's the type tool. We hit the T icon. All right. And we draw a box just like we're going to type in the box. I want to draw a rectangular box because, you know, the business card is sort of rectangular. So I'm going to draw a rectangular box and then let go. And now I can type inside of it. Now I'm going to type my name, Anthony. Now I'm going to get the default text, whatever it gives me. Um, and I want to change that because obviously I don't like that. Um, the way it looks so I go to you can go up on the top here where it gives you the font options or you can use your character panel over here on the right and I'll give you a bunch of font options so you might have some cool fonts already installed um, I can do a USC type font that's kinda cool Trajan let's just go with the USC theme here and I wanna make it bigger so I'm just going to go as big as possible here. Now, um, here's, here's something interesting. How do I make sure that my name is centered, centered in the card? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, I'm going to stretch this box out. Uh, when I drag my mouse over to the edge, you'll see this little arrow. It allows me to drag the box to this edge, the edge of the card, right? And then I'm going to drag the other edge to the other side of the card. So now I know that this text box is the exact width of the card. But my name that's inside the text box is not centered. So all I have to do is go to paragraph, my paragraph panel. And you'll see the second icon on the top here. That means center align. I just click it. Now it's centered. It's centered um, the width wise but it's not centered um, vertically. Now, you can really be specific with it if you want and center it vertically. But if you're like taking a design class with my design teacher in design school, they'll tell you that everything has to be done by the eye. Because, and it totally makes sense, because there's an image here, this building looks like it's actually in the center of the the card right so my name I would want it to be just above because it was actually just in centered it might it might hit the top of that I mean it looks like that's centered it might hit the top of the the roof there and I don't want that so I can just adjust this text box to be just a little bit over it and I think I want to go a little bit bigger okay so I um, the shortcut to making it bigger is Shift command. Shift command. And then also hitting you hit shift command and then your your um, open and close brackets. No. The one this this one, uh, the greater than makes it larger. Less than makes it smaller. That's a shortcut. All right, so I want to change the color of this. Does anybody know? Yeah, question. Can I ask you a question. Yeah. Why I can't move my name, those kind of stuff, like align, those kind of stuff? I just can't. Like, you showed you were moving with your mouse. Mm -hmm. I just cannot move Show me. I don't know why it's even great. 
real quick. You're trying to move this? Okay. And white goes uh, gray. Sorry? White. I don't know why it was gray. It's not gray now. I don't know why it was gray. But, um, you get, see the arrow tool? Okay. Now you can drag it. Like this, right? Okay. Like this. And then you know how to set it. Oh. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, does anybody know the USC uh, color? Do, is there a Pantone color? What? What is it? Right. Okay. So what? Like, what's the um? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. USC um, color palette. I wonder if it exists. There's got to be official colors here. Oh, there's Pantone colors. Here they are. Let's see if we can get a Pantone color going on over here. So I want to change the color of of my text. So um. All right. Do you see on the right side it says color? Click that. That's your color panel. That's that's one way of changing your color. There's usually two or three ways to do everything in InDesign. But what I'm really interested in is swatches. I'm interested in swatches here because we're going to make a new swatch for our color. I'm going to make a new swatch. So I go on the bottom right, it says new swatch. I click that. And now i got a copy here. Right, so I'm going to change that color. We're going to make it the USC color. So I'm going to double click on it. Call it uh, USC color. And I'm going to try to find the USC color. So what I'm going to do is, I don't want, I'm trying not to overcomplicate this for you guys, but let's go to the Pantone. I, I'm going to color mode, select Pantone. And I'm going to search for that number that it gave me, 201C. Come on. Oh, you know what? It's coded, not uncoded. Coded means, watch. There it is. So coded means in the print process, when they print something, they print it with a coding. If they don't print it with a coding, it's called uncoded. And usually you want something coded because it protects the ink. So there's 201C. Let's see how that looks. Pretty cool. I don't see, remember I told you I, I don't like those frames because I see this red line every time I click off and it's just bothering me in my design here. So I'm gonna go back to view uh, extras, hide frame edges. So I can see how it looks. So I think that looks pretty cool. Obviously, I think for what I did, that's okay. Um, now, we, let's make the other side real quick. Let's make the other side. So, go to back to pages. I'm going to go on the lower right corner of that panel, create new page, create new page. Here I am. I want this side to be the USC color. The, I want it to be all red. So, what I'm going to do is go back to my layers. And I, I have one layer that's underneath all my text. Really, this te technically I should just call this text. And then I should just call this background. That's fine. So I unlock it. I unlock it and I make sure I select it. You see it's... And this it, is on the, uh, the background page? Yes. And I make sure it's selected, this layer selected here. Because I have two. I have the front and I have the back. So I'm going to put a color here. So I'm going to create a solid rectangle. You see that um, shape over here on the left? Rectangle tool. I'm just going to draw a rectangle. I, I made a mistake. It shouldn't give you that. Just let it go. It's not filled right now. For some reason, it's not filled. So I need to fill it. So I need to go back to my swatches because I created a USC swatch. There it is. So this is going to be where I'm going to put my text. Now, um, go back to my layers and lock it because I'm going to start typing text on top of it. Now, USC has another color, which is the gold. So let's make the gold. <clears throat> what is the gold? It's 123C. So go here. I'm just going to copy, I'm just going to copy, I'm going to select a, a color, I'm going to copy that one, 
double click on it gold process nope spot and where is my I filled it I just filled it so I've had a shape see the shape I, I selected it right I, I created a shape and I just clicked the color to fill it now I'm glad you brought that up because um, you got to see here on the on the lower left there's two I two squares one is a square and then one looks like the outside of a square right if the outside of the square is on top that means it's only going to fill the outside the frame this little stroke it's a border really but i we want the inside filled so it's really easy to just switch it if you just click this little icon next to it swap it so i want the inside filled the inside filled you guys all there that you're good you're good with that okay so remember lock that yeah we can't the the, the shape You don't want if if you have a frame uh -huh. fill color. What we do is like for example, his looks like this. Yours looks like hold on. It's got like green, right? So I'm like, oh, I don't want a border. So if that's selected, and then make sure that the green border is on top, not on the bottom. You see that it's on top. I clicked. I I literally clicked it. So it's on top. I just go to none in my swatches panel. I click none and it takes it off. So you make sure the strike is through it. It means there's nothing there and there's no color there. Cool. <clears throat> so that's done. So I was in the process of making another color, adding a color. There's another way to, there's ways to edit colors too. Uh, let's see here. Let me go to my layers, make sure that's locked. Swatches. I duplicated a, uh, I duplicated a color because I'm going to make my own. Oops, sorry. No. Yes. I'm duplicating a color. And I'm going to find the gold. So we've got to go to a uh, coded. Where is Pantone coded? Solid coded. Okay. Yep. What was it? 123, right? 123. Why is it giving me? But that it looks like that's it. May not be the exact same, but it, it's pretty close. All right, so there it is. Why is it not renaming? Oh, because so <clears throat> if you're using Pantone swatches, it won't let you custom name them for some reason because Pantone is actually the the copyright brand. Uh, name so you can't you can't rename it and that makes sense too because sometimes the printers are gonna want the exact color so if you renamed it they wouldn't know the color so now I'm gonna type on my layers that says text background is selected so if I try to type it won't let me type it won't let me type so I gotta make sure I select the text layer now I'm gonna draw another text box I'm gonna draw another text box and I'm going to start typing my information. Um, let's see. <clears throat> so I'm my name and title. I, I type my name and title here. Now, it's giving me black and it's defaulting it to Minion. But I want it Trajan because that's what I've decided I'm using. And I want to change the color. So the first thing I can do is I just select select it all uh, by triple clicking, or you can just drag and select everything, or you can also just go Command A, just like Word, and select everything. Now I'm going to change the color. Go to my swatches. You see it? now the colors changed. Now it's looking good. I'm looking official. Oh, sorry, swatches. 
My swatches panel should always be kind of here. So I'm just going to separate it now. Okay, there it is. Boom, it's right there. So I now, this panel right here where I, see how I just dragged it and it selected a blue? It kind of like stuck it. This is like my working panel. I got everything right here for me. <clears throat> now, I need to change the font. I was using Trajan, right? So let me go back. Let me find it. Trajan, regular. Whoa, it's huge. What the heck is going on here? So, first of all, this is 12-point type. A little bit too big. That's like that's w way bigger than it needs to be. I'm going to go 9. Let's see if 9 works. 9 works. Now it all fits on one, uh, one line here. But the one thing I don't like is that Trajan as a font is only uppercase. Now that's fine for my name, but for my title, I don't want it uppercase. I wanted it title case. Um, so I'm gonna just change the font. Um, and just for, we could use Gil Sands, that's fine. I'll use Gil Sands bold. Uh, I don't like that. I'll use italic, yeah, that's cool. Okay. So now I'm just gonna, now remember, see I have this pink line here. That's really the edge of my card, right? I'm going to show you guidelines really quick. How to use guidelines. You all see the measurement rulers on the top and the sides here, right? Correct? If you go to the ruler on the left-hand side with your pointer and you, you click and drag, click and drag, you'll start to see a line come out from the side. You see that? I'm going to let it go where my zero is because I mean that means the edge of my card. And then I'm going to do it again, do another one. Let's see, let's see that one half. That means half an inch. That's a half an inch from the left. It's too much. I probably want to go a quarter of an inch right there. And then I also want to go a quarter inch from the top. So I can do the same thing from the top. Now I have guidelines. So now when I place this text box, I know it's perfectly, perfectly aligned from the top and the side. It's the same distance. And your guidelines, you turn them on and off, you just hit command uh, colon. So command colon or semicolon button. And that's how you turn them on and off. Okay, cool. So that's essentially, then, then what I do from that point, I've created one text box. Now I want to keep going. Um, and, and rather than starting over, starting a new text box, this is the font that I'm working with. This is the font that I like. So I'm going to copy and paste this text box. So just like in Word, you go Command C, Command V, same thing. So there it is. I created another text box. Command C, Command V. So I select the box, Command C, Command V. I pasted a new box. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm not gonna use the font for my name. I'm just gonna use the font for my title. And then I'm gonna put my email address. I don't like it italic, so I'm going to change it to regular, but I, I like the way that it's it's looking. So let me turn on my guidelines again, and I want to put it... What you use for the email address? Sorry? What's that, uh, it's same nine. I haven't changed... Yeah, nine. Some fonts, like Trajan, is nine, but it looks bigger because it's all uh, uppercase, and it just looks different. Typically, just so you know, you don't want to go smaller than... I would say seven point font. You don't want to go smaller, that's your max. And I think 12 to 13 point is like way too big, unless you're gonna do something really like creative and you guys wanna, you know, sorry. You wanna go really like, if I'm like a designer and I wanna do something cool and you know, you wanna be bold in your face, you can do something bigger, but 
you really have to if you're gonna make something that extreme or dramatic, then you just have to really go all out, which you totally can. I'm I'm obviously going very conservative <laughs> here with this business card because for sake of the workshop, I just want you guys to make something. So I have two text boxes now. I have two separate text boxes. The reason why I did that is because I may decide at a later time. Now I'm also um, minimizing the size of this box because I think the box is too big. So I'm just dragging it to make it smaller. If you make it too small, then it'll cut off the text that's inside of it. So just big enough right there. Because the reason why I have these on two separate boxes is because I may decide that I don't want my name and my information aligned here right <laughs> and then you know address Twitter right everything is left aligned but I may want it right aligned so I want to put it over here right just so it's off a little bit but I need to Select all the text that's in there and go to my paragraph panel and right align it. Make sure it's right aligned because it's going to be on the right side. It's on the right side. And then my guidelines, I want to make sure that it's the same distance from the edge of the card that it is on the left, that it is on the right. So I'm just going to line up my box here, this, this guideline. Okay, it's perfectly aligned. So I know that it's equal distance so the reason why I kind of separated it like that because now my name stands out from my information so once I'm done placing all my text in there let's just say I'm done let's say I'm done um, I'm gonna save it to my folder and I'm gonna send it to print send it to print so the printer is asking me for a PDF file because that's how we print everything. So we're going to go to file export. Now, I'm also, you don't have to memorize this right now. I'll write it down and I'll tell you. This is the last thing we're going to do in the class is export it as a PDF. And immediately the dialog box that comes up, it says Adobe PDF print. That's exactly what I want because InDesign knows what I want. So it's smart like that. All right. Now, I, this is crazy. The only thing I need to know here, the only thing I need to know that I'm going to show you is make sure it's high quality print here. But I go to Marks and Bleeds and I select Use Document Bleed Settings because I added bleeds because there's an image there. So the bleeds need to show. And I'll, again, I'll, 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 go, I'll go through this uh, with you in person, but um, you don't need to know this right now. But that's what you do. And then you hit Export and it should be creating it. Let me go. Sorry? So when you go to export yeah. and hit save, marks and bleeds on the left hand side. Marks and bleeds. Click that. Make sure use document bleed settings is selected. Okay? Hit export. Boom. And here's my PDF. Let's double click on that sucker. There it is. There's my PDF. And then I here's my other page. Nice and sharp, nice and clear, and I could print it out. Now, uh, let's say that um, you're not using bleeds. Then if you didn't check that, it wouldn't print, it wouldn't save it with the bleeds. And then the printer's gonna call you and say, hey, you got an image here on the front that has bleeds on it. And you're like, oh, okay, let me just add it. You don't add it, you just selected something wrong. So, perfect. We have like an hour now. I'm sure you guys already started creating your own business card, but you guys have an hour to create your own business card now. So, create your business card. I'll be here. If you guys need help locking it down or uh, questions on maybe putting in a custom font or um, images, let me know. Let's do it. I'm going to show you another shortcut real quick. Because Randall, your name's Randall? Yeah. Because Randall did something I want to show you guys. It's a trick. Let's say I, um, this is why um, we should have copied that text box. So like, for example, if I want to make another text box and I like these fonts, 
I'm going to copy paste it, right? But what we, what we did was we created a brand new text box. So for example, I create a new text box here and this is going to be my phone number, right? And I'm like, whoa, that's not the font that I, I want it to be like the workshop font. So what I'm going to do is an easy way to do it, an easy way to do it is select it, go to my um, panel options and I see this eyedropper tool. I hold it and I, and I select uh, eyedropper tool. Okay. And um, well, it's deselected. Let me select it again. And I click my eyedropper tool and I select workshop instructor, it changes it. It changes it to match the same font as workshop instructor. So it's kind of like a shortcut, but obviously I just want to left align it and change it to regular. I can show you guys a really simple hack, real quick, on how to um, make a name, like kind of logo, if you guys want to real quick. We'll, we'll do yours. So I'm gonna go to myfonts.com, myfonts.com. This boy is getting so busy. My fonts. Uh, my fonts. <clears throat> com. And I'm going to create David a five minute logo. Okay? Don't give away my trade secrets. So let me do sans serif. Handwritten is fine. You like handwritten? Yeah. Okay, let's go to handwritten. Because I'm making your logo. Oh, sorry. Oh, where is it? Handwritten. Okay, let's go handwritten. Let's see how it looks with your name in it. Yeah. So, tell me which one you like as I go. If you see any, then say it. If not, then we'll keep going because we can go all day long. No, but I mean, come on. I mean, we got to see something. Should I go back up? Yeah, one second. Start here. It's with Which one? This. No, no. No? Again, down, down, down. Let's go for this one. With this one? Yeah. Right here? Yeah. Okay, I like it. It's cool. It's bold. It's thick. So I clicked on it. And I'm going to make it a little bit larger. Now, I could buy this font for $12 if I wanted to, right? But we don't have time to do that. So we only have five minutes to make your logo. So I'm just going to drag it. That's a little secret nobody knows about. And I just created an image. And what I'm going to do is bring it into Illustrator real quick. Let's just say I'm going to make a new page here. Um, layers yeah gold is cool okay I put it in Illustrator <clears throat> I'm gonna do something called image trace and it just traced it so now I have made it an object and um, for now that's all I need I just needed an object so what I'm gonna do watch this I'm just going to drag this into uh, oh, into InDesign real quick. Oh, it's so huge. It's okay. I'll make it smaller. I want it kind of big, David, if you don't mind, because I think that's kind of cool if it's big. I don't know if you like these colors or not, but... Um, I have my object in here inside of InDesign. Now it's almost going to get cut off by the edges there because I have bleeds. So I want to center it. I want to change the color. Um, I just hit my white arrow tool and I go back to the USC color there. Boom. So there you go. Now I got your boom. So when I give it to people, boom, that's my logo. Let's do a quick monogram session in another five minutes. So let's go. I'm going to Illustrator. David, what's your last name? Zero, with a Z. With a Z? DZ? Okay, cool. So. Also middle name, to be honest. Sorry? I have also a middle name, but let's do it just. Simple. We could do middle names too. What's your, what, what's your middle name? M. M? 
I don't like it. DMZ. Just well, I'm sorry. I don't mean I don't like it. I mean I don't think it like flows with a with a mark because that letter. If it was like A, and then you have um, D A Z Daz, it's kind of cool. You can make Daz. But if, you have to use the Korean number. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh, that's right. The DMZ. What is that? It's the. That's the point where you actually can walk in the middle, right? The DMZ they call it. Wow. That's cool. But then they're going to be like, whoa, you're DMZ. All right, so let's take D, for example. And then I don't like this font. Um, you like cursive, handwritten. I don't see, there's no any like handwritten fonts here. Actually, there, there it is. And then I'm going to create another letter, Z. DZ. It looks like OZ. So you know what? Maybe the D is lowercase. That looks kind of cool. Just playing with it. So these are both fonts. I need to make these objects. So real quick, I'm going to go to um, type, create outlines, now they're objects. Zoom in. I'm going to put the Z kind of right over this thingy. That actually, here. I like that. But I don't like this little curvature. Z lowercase? Z lowercase? We could try it. Z. You know that Z is crazy, right? That I mean, it's a cool Z. Uh, lowercase. The, the font is not good because it's too... Uh, Look, it's, it's, I mean, it could be like DZ. I mean, it could be a three. If you like the number three, that would work. But yeah, if, if you want to print it, you can print it. You can print it on Moo um, online or, you know, you can, I can um, hook you up with a printer and you can print them. But the goal should be to print. The USC doesn't print them for you, huh? I don't think so. They don't have hookups? I got some hookups. Like I said, you can go to Moo.com. It's like fifty dollars or something like that, um, or it might be a little bit more. Um, or I can hook you up with printers. No problem. All right, we don't like that font, but let's just, for sake of argument, let's find another one. Um, papyrus. No. <laughs> Should we use papyrus? No. I, I don't. Know. I would say I like this. Did you see the Saturday Night Live episode with Papyrus? Mm -hmm. No? Oh, you did? No, I haven't. Oh my god, you didn't see the Saturday Night Live skit? You didn't? I heard about it. Okay, you guys gotta watch it. It's so funny. It's recent, right? Yeah, it's recent. Everyone in the design world was going crazy. So I just made David's DZ. And I'm gonna just drag that there. I like that. I made it an object. And I'm going to bring it in, not like this, but here. I just made a monogram. Color it, boom. And I can even like put it on the edge. Here. And then you can just, you know, 